so today is Tuesday the 6th of August and those of you who follow my Universal Credit videos may remember that today was the day I was supposed to have my meeting about the savings interest that I shouldn't have declared on my claim. And that meeting had been changed five times. And I was fairly sure that I was going to get another change of meeting. But, by some miracle, it has not. So I am now walking to this meeting. So we'll see what happens. I was told to bring every single receipt in and out for the entirety of my claim up to that point when I stopped declaring the banking interest so they could, I don't know, I don't know what it's got to do with it. So I've got all the paperwork and I've separated out all the savings information so they can see what I've over declared and on what month. So I don't know why they need to see everything else because they have the summary figures of all my other claims each month. Now what happens when I get there I don't know. The question is are they going to go through every single receipt? Are they going to want to go through every single receipt? Uh, the meetings were only designed to last 20 minutes. So I don't think that gives them enough time. But it's why I've separated things out to make things a bit easier. Because I want them to see that I followed the instructions. Now, I think someone else on the channel said that I think they used to work for the DWP. And when things like this happened, they never bothered to look through the paperwork. But we'll see. I'm interested to see what would happen because I've got this meeting, but I was also supposed to have a three monthly roundup right at the end of my claim period. So. I think it was on the 21st of August, which as far as I'm aware is, is me being signed off Universal Credit permanently. So I don't know, that meeting was gone. And when they booked in this tax paperwork meeting, that other meeting disappeared. So I don't know if they've amalgamated it into one or they've made a mistake, who knows? Right, I'm gonna get on and I shall let you know what happens afterwards. So this is a retrospective add-in because I forgot to hit record when I came out of the meeting. I'm such an idiot. Uh, I'm back home and I'm just going through the footage and I just completely forgot to hit record and took a photograph of myself because I'm an idiot. Anyway, so I came out of that meeting and I basically said that um, they I took out all the paperwork and said, I don't know if you want to see all this. And she was like, no. <laughs> not interested so I gave her the printout of all the savings that I had misclaimed which is basically all she wanted and um, and that was it I was in and out in 10 minutes um, I don't have a sign off meeting now because um, I'm obviously not going to be kept on UC after the 21st of August um, 
and back to the video. So I'm going to wait for the official sign off and then I'm going to do my review of a year on Universal Credit startup year. And uh, so what happens? So 21st of August is when my claim should terminate. They may well come back and ask for more paperwork regarding the interest. But heaven knows when that might or might not happen. So there are still posts to come. Um, and I'll keep you posted on how it all goes. So you'll probably get a few more posts out yet. But it's, it's simple, you know, if you've made a mistake and you need to claim back money that you shouldn't have declared, then, you know, I went along with every single piece of paper, every single receipt, everything, just in case. And they didn't want to see any of it. They have not got the time to look at an entire year's worth of income and outgoing receipts for the sake of a bit of banking interest which is good for me because it means I didn't have to sort through all the paperwork and then I can put it all back in order for my self-assessment paperwork which is good so if you have any questions about that process do let me know spent more time putting together the paperwork just in case than I did actually doing the meeting. Sometimes it went exactly as I thought it would, really. We do not have high expectations for the DWP and they looked really busy in there today. When I was in there today there was a guy in front of me who was already being seen by the same lady and he was an uber driver and there was some confusion over what he could claim as an uber driver and what he should be charging his customers or uber should be charging his customers and as she said to me afterwards when I made a, a brief comment about it because I could overhear some of the conversation. She said, Uber is no way to make a living. And I said that I follow a couple of people on YouTube who do food delivery and the money you make versus the outgoings that go with it are ridiculous. I mean, I briefly looked at it, but I'd have to upgrade my car insurance to business I'd have to increase my mileage you've got the petrol the wear and tear for really small amounts of money because these systems are designed to benefit the big companies like Uber and delivery customers pay a lot of money but your delivery driver doesn't get any of that and I am amazed how anyone makes enough to live on. I mean, this is so far below minimum wage, you can't even fathom it. And I'm going to say a few more things about um, minimum wage jobs. Because I keep getting comments through from people who make very blatant comments about people who are out of work or why there are so many unfilled jobs and don't bother to do the research I mean you've only got to type into Google to find out about things so I've made a post which I might tag on here or I might make separate with a bit of information on that because I don't think people understand 
how impossible it is to live on a minimum wage. I did some calculations, some very average calculations, and it's absolutely blooming terrifying. Not everyone has a degree. Not everyone has a useful degree. Not everyone has cheap rent. Not everyone lives in a multi-person household where everyone's paying their bill. So I'll throw that in separately somewhere along the line. And then that'll spark some conversation, I'm sure. So that's the end of this today. That's my update. I've got my meeting and it went as planned, I suppose. I meant to add, my work coach said that the minimum income floor is going up again soon. Um, and it's going up to 1500 a month. That never applied to me because on the start-up year, the minimum income floor isn't really a thing you have to think about because you're on a slightly different system. But I would say it's certainly if you are on the start-up year and it's coming to an end and you know that you're going to be accepted onto the system because you left have less than £6,000 worth of savings, then you need to bear that in mind. They will want you to hit 1500 a month in income. I don't really know what that means in real terms. Does that mean if you don't hit it, you don't get money? Or if you do hit it, you get money? I have no idea. Someone else out there will know but I've never been part of that system as such, so I can't really explain it. So do add a comment below if you can explain it. Not like the system's easy to explain anyway. That's it.